Welcome to another edition of Mike Hagan and the Strength Team Podcast. We're so glad that you joined us today. And here we are in Missoula, Montana, and it is August 24th. It's Monday night, and we have had a wonderful summer. We just had a great time doing a crusade last weekend in a, in a place called Hungry Horse. Hungry Horse, Montana is right next to the, to the, uh, the passage of uh, West Glacier, which is just a, a beautiful area. Just had an awesome event. It was a smaller event. Saw 72 people in a two-night program make a decision for Jesus Christ for the very first time in their life. It was awesome. And then, of course, the week before that, we were in Cowspell, Montana, Cornerstone Community Church. We did an event where the church uh, was right there on 93, the main drag through Cowspell, but then did it out, they had the, the way they had their outdoor uh, backyard, kind of, it was like an amphitheater setting, and people brought their chairs out, and it really had a, an awesome event, had a couple hundred people a night come out, and hundreds of people gave their heart to the Lord, so good things been happening with the strength team, but what I want to focus on today and talk about is our Brazil missions trip, just kind of finish up with that, I know we talk about it a lot, and the last podcast you saw was the stadium, we did the schools, the stadium, but then one of the things, a big highlight that a lot of people have been asking me about and emailing me about, how'd the river trip go? And so we're going to show you on the, on the footage of the river trip today, which was just absolutely unbelievable what the Lord did to uh, just explain what the river trip is. The Manaus, Brazil is 1.8 million people, but it sits on the Amazon River right in Brazil. And the area that we went is to the west bank of the area, if you were Last week I talked with Charles Stafford from Amazon Vision Ministries and they talked about all the different work they're doing, the big boat they have, the new boat that they're getting and uh, uh, going up and, and, and giving aid to these people that are, I mean, when you go out and you look at these uh, places, it's just like, how can a person live in, in this environment? Um, I, I know just on the little trip we got swamp. there was a bunch of hornets that... <laughs> The kids just swam, swarmed the boat, and I got stung, and that was real fun. And so, uh, but then, you know, just to see these people, um, the way that their lives are, and the way that they, they're, they're on, on the river, and, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if your house floats, that's a good thing, because they were, they're in flood stages, in 100 years, it hasn't been as bad as it's been when we were down there. It was 45 feet above the um, normal level. A lot of home people had to go to higher ground, and it was just, it was unbelievable to, just the um, um, devastation of some of these people. And so uh, we want to show you when taking in that was very successful. What I'm trying to say is there were 18 people on the boat, two strength team guys, and then 16 uh, members of a church called Live, uh, uh, Live Oak, Florida. It was a, uh, the Baptist church there. They went on the trip. A lot of them were young people and teenagers. And what we did is we did a missions outreach together. So we work with, uh, in the daytime, you know, doing ministry work, you know, going in, hiking into some villages, you know, miles and miles and miles to get in from the boat to the river to the village, and then going to almost every house, presenting the gospel. And one of the things they did that was really cool, along with presenting the gospel, they gave them what they call a proclaimer. And what a proclaimer is, I wish I had one to show you here, but a proclaimer is a box. It looks just a little black box like this, and it's got a little wind-up thing in the outside of it. But it's the coolest thing, because what you can do with this box, you wind it up, and then it, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a Bible. It's, it's, it's a uh, Brazilian in Portuguese, the Bible in Portuguese. So you wind this up, and then you can push the button, and then it'll play, and it'll speak the Bible to you in Portuguese. And people go, well, that's not a big deal. I'm telling you, in, a, in an area where there are Christians that have never read the Bible themselves, because some people can't read it was, it was awesome to see the look on Christian's face when they got this gift in these churches. It was unbelievable. So we took these proclaimers to different homes, these little uh, audio Bibles that wind up. The other thing, we would present them with the gospel. And so in the night program, they do a program, they do an event, and hundreds of people would come forward and give their heart to the Lord. When it comes down to it, you know, uh, you know there, there's a lot of work that's gone into this event. Really, it's been a six-month project uh, with this outreach that we just did and what I mean by that is that there was a lot of uh, a lot of hands-on work on the front end you know all the different people the the Florida Baptist Convention uh, the Amazon uh, Convention the Amazon Basin Ministry Convention 
uh, Southern Baptist Convention uh, helped put things together in a way that, you know, Charles Stafford, Sarah, all the different people who helped out and made this trip possible so that we could come in and do our thing and, and see the harvest. And, uh, you know, there, and, and that's kind of the way, you know, on a missions trip like this, when we team up and we partner with a group, we always want to just not go in and do something by ourselves, like a shot in the dark thing. But we want to team up with somebody who's already got something going on. And then let the Lord use the strength team as an evangelistic tool to be able to reach this work that they've been doing. And, you know, if you watch the strength team, you know how it works. That Some people that normally won't listen to a, a preacher in a suit and tie will come to see our program. And it's just phenomenal. The results, uh, especially when everything is prepared and all the stuff is, was, was, you know, the, the 16 young people that were on that boat that had a part of uh, going to city to city and really taking the gospel to people who need it, people who are hurting, people who are, are, are in a bad way, their, their home lives. And, and some of the statistics, I, I'm not even going to go into it, of the hurt and the pain and some of the problems that, that these people go, are, are facing today. And we know this. We know that there's a lot of people out there in the world that have needs. A lot of people have a hurting heart. But we know that Jesus is the healer of a wounded heart. And so we go in. We, we always give it our best. But it's the Lord that speaks to us. It's like light amongst darkness. He comes in and he shines on the light of people. And God's done a great work. And so um, we were excited that we had the opportunity to go as many villages as we did. I know one of the guys had to come back early. Greg Mead, another guy that uh, I, w I was trying to get on the, the podcast today, but we couldn't get him on. But uh, you, you'll see Greg a lot leading the team and, and speaking. Um, but he told me about this one thing. He had an opportunity to stay back. There was one guy that, that would watch the, the crusade in the village that they were in before they left. One guy just that was very cynical, uh, kind of laughed and made fun. And 80-year-old man, he just sat back there and... Uh, you know, it was, they were going to go back. It was going to be time to go back. And uh, Greg said, you know, his flight didn't leave for another day. He goes, let me stay in this town another day. And so it was that, that day that he stayed in that town and he, and he was able to just talk with this man, this 80-year-old man who was hurting, who had been through a lot of different things in his life and a lot of different things happened in his family. And I'm not going to go into detail about that. But what, what ended up happening is that this 80-year-old man that was so cynical that thought we were a big joke coming in there at the end with tears coming in his eyes where the translator gave his heart to the Lord. And, uh, you know, I thought about this when Greg told me that story. It's, you know, if it would, you know would, would we really go across the country and just for one person, that one extra day stay? I mean, a, a man who's 80 years old, who, who knows how long he has to live, you know, by him giving his heart to the Lord and what God did in his life, just that one day, is it worth it? Oh, yes, it is. So we're getting ready to start into our another missions field coming up here. <laughs> You're like, oh, no, not another one. We, listen, the greatest missions field in the world today is what we do on a on a day to day basis. And that's uh, our main thing that we do is school assemblies. This year, the strength team is going to be in a thousand schools and it starts this week. Pray for us. Start Tuesday night, the 26th to the 30th of August. We're going to be in Orlando, Florida at Sweetwater Baptist Church, North Florida, right around the Longwood area. You're not going to want to miss it. And that, that's the start of a, a great year that we have coming up. Uh, we're going to be four weeks in Florida. Then we're going to be in uh, Oregon. Then we're going to be in uh, Michigan, Jackson, Michigan. We, 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 there's like 12 events that we're doing in the month of September all the guys and spread out all over the country, different places. But pray for us, pray for us. Our big theme this year, and this is what we really feel is that, that God loves people. Um, you know, just kind of as a praise report as the day being the 24th of August, that we've seen over 28,000 people make decisions for Christ, give their heart to the Lord, and we still have 28 events left. And I just want to say to you, friend, I would encourage you to keep standing with the strength team. Keep believing us. Number one is your prayers. We have people all over the country praying for the ministry of the strength team. And I'm telling you, we need that so bad. The other thing, we have people that will give uh, don donations. We have monthly givers. One of the things that we're talking about, and we're really going to talk about here coming up with the school year, is our Club 42 program. Maybe your family 
could sponsor an assembly, one school assembly, which is $500 for a school assembly, that your family, $42 a month, be a monthly giver of $42 in one year, you can sponsor one school assemblies. The problem is we're doing more schools, but funding has been cut back, and people like you help us. The other thing I want you to pray about, possibly being a global partner, and what that is is in the big spectrum of things of what we're going to do in missions next year and going to a different part of the world, you can also help out in that way. So God bless you, friend. Thank you so much for being a part of our team. Anything you watch, you pray for us, you give. Um, some send, some preach, but God rewards the same. And thank you for watching another edition of Mike Higgin and the Strength Team Podcast.